Have you ever wondered why some societal issues are spotlighted while others are swept under the rug? Let's start with two terms. Misandry, the hatred or prejudice against men, and misogyny, the hatred or prejudice against women. Now that we have defined these terms, let's delve deeper into their societal implications. Misogyny, a term you are likely familiar with, is a widely recognized and condemned form of prejudice. It rears its ugly head in various aspects of society, media, and culture, from workplace discrimination to degrading portrayals of women in entertainment. Thankfully, society is vigilant in identifying and condemning these instances. Laws are enacted, social campaigns are launched, and public outcry resounds, aimed at eradicating this deeply ingrained bias. Misogyny is condemned and fought against. But are acts of misandry as heavily policed? Well, not quite. Misandry, on the other hand, is less recognized and often ignored. It lurks in societal norms, media portrayals, and cultural practices, often masked as humor or harmless stereotypes. This prejudice against men, though equally unjust, doesn't provoke the same public outcry or legal repercussions as its counterpart misogyny. In movies, for instance, violence against men by women seems to be applauded by canned laughter. One must ask, is this about equal rights? or the perceived oppressed overpowering the perceived oppressor. It's almost as if the scales of justice are unbalanced, allowing misandry to be easily dismissed, or worse, overlooked. If a man leaves a family and breaks up a marriage because he isn't happy, he is condemned as a spineless coward. However, if a woman leaves a marriage and breaks up a family because she also isn't happy, her bravery is applauded for chasing her happiness and she assumes the societal role of victim. Crazy, right? Misandry, unlike misogyny, seems to slide under society's radar. But why is that? The difference in reaction to these two forms of prejudice boils down to societal perception and understanding. Society often operates under a set of norms and expectations that can contribute to the dismissal of misandry. We've become so accustomed to these norms that we often overlook the bias that exists against men. Misogyny is a crime, but misandry? It seems to be laughed at. Which is why 80% of suicide victims are male. If women were the oppressed ones, that statistic would be the other way around, wouldn't it? The concept of privilege often plays a role in this perception. When one group is seen as privileged, their experiences of prejudice can be minimized or invalidated. There is a battle of victimhood, where the victim justifies their own abhorrent behavior to others as if they deserve it. They've suffered, so now you must suffer. Right? So this brings us to the question, with a world war looming around the corner, will these same women who shout for equality, who condemn their male counterparts as evil oppressors, will they turn up to the Kremlin carrying a weapon and wearing a smile on their face? Somehow I doubt it. That is when the tables will turn. Those evil, oppressive men will now be needed to help protect these vulnerable women. But will they do it? In a truly equal society, no form of prejudice should be ignored or dismissed. It's time we shine a light on all forms of hatred and bias. That's all for today. Until next time.